Now, hi everyone, we're going to be checking for solutions today in our notes. Um, so your essential question for this set of notes is how many solutions are there truly on a linear graph? Um, our terms, I am actually, our, our terms are solution and non-solution. I am going to be telling you the definition, so please write this down. Please pause the video if I'm, ta if I'm speaking too fast or go ahead and rewind it if you need to capture the actual definition. So our first term is a solution. This means that there are points on the graph. A non-solution means that the points are not on the graph. Okay. Um, another thing I'd like you guys to add in there, so there are infinitely many solutions on this graph, on these graphs. So there are infinite number of solutions on a linear graph. Now we're going to check for solutions graphically. Please go ahead and write down these directions as you will only need to be, they are the same directions for our next few examples, next three examples actually. So go ahead and write down these directions. The graphs of linear equations are given. Determine if each of the given points are solutions to the linear equation. Um, and then we, I have this first example. So we're testing out to see if we have one third, or sorry, not one third, 1 comma 3 is a solution of the equation. We're just going to say if it's true or false. So, by the way, if we actually look at this, look at your graph. Go to the right one and then up 3. Make an actual point on that graph. And is that point on the line? Well, in this case it is, so we actually have a true statement here. That point 1 comma 3 is a solution to our equation because it is on the line. The point negative 2 comma 0 is a solution of the equation. We're trying to see if this is true or false. So let's go to the left two and actually we aren't going up or down any so at that point right there. Do you guys see how that point right here is actually not a point on the line? So that means we have a false statement. Alright let's go to our next example. Again see it's the same direction so please don't write down the same directions just write example two and we are going to look to see if our statements are true here. So if we have negative 5 comma 5, we want to see, okay, go to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and up 5. Awesome. That point actually is on our graph again, so on our linear equation. So the linear graph I'm talking about is this right here, you guys. So if it's anywhere on that point, um, then it is a solution. The reason why a line has infinite many, many solutions because these arrows actually have and mean that the graph goes on continually forever and ever and ever. So that is why these values actually have infinitely many solutions. Now let's just check our next point here. So if the point negative 1 comma 4 is a solution of the equation, let's test it out, see if it's true or false. So go to the left one and then up 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, it's actually right above it. I can't really get my cursor on there. Um, it's very, very close. It looks like it's almost on it, but it's actually not touching the actual line. It has to be actually physically on that line, and in that case, it is not. Now, our last example for this, um, we're going to test that same point. So my line right here is right there, so let's go ahead and test these points. 0, 1. Well, 0, 1 is right up here, so that is false negative 3 comma 1 so to the left 1 2 3 and we're going up 1 so that actually is also false and that is okay we need to have points actually on the line in order to be solutions okay something to remember you guys um, remember that points always come in the form x y in your notation and the reason why I want you to remember that because when you're actually graphing your points like this you won't be able to tell if these points are actually on your graph if you're sitting if you don't know that this represents the x you're going left and right and this red value represents your y up and down okay so the next thing um, I would like you guys for checking for solutions algebraically I would like you guys to so this is step one you're going to plug an x and y value into equation and simplify both sides of the equation. So we're not solving for each side of the equation, we're actually just going to do the math on the left side and see if it equals the math on the right side. Once you've solved, if the solution or values on both sides of the equations come out to be equal, then you have identified the point to be a solution to a linear equation. If they are equal to each other, so if I have, say like we did the math, and all of a sudden I got 6 equals 6. Yay, they equal each other. That left side equals the right side, which this actually means that this is a point located on your actual linear graph. 
Well, if they're not equal, then the point is not a solution to that linear function. And what I mean by not equal, you'll actually do your math on the left side, you might get like a 5, and then that equals, you were supposed to be trying to get a 6 on that right side. These are not equal here. Okay, so that means that that is not a point on your actual graph. So let's go ahead and take some examples and look at um, what's going on here. So for our first example, again, please write down these directions only once um, for these next four examples here. So determine if each of the given points are solutions to the linear equation algebraically this time. So we don't actually have to solve this for y equals mx plus b or anything. We get to just plug in those points for x and y. So anywhere that I see an x, I'm going to be plugging in a 0 this time into this equation. Anywhere I see a y, I'm going to be plugging in a 4. So let's go ahead and actually start doing this. So if I see my, so we're going to just rewrite this equation, 4 times, oh, I have an x. So what did I say I was going to plug in for x? The 0, because I got it from this part of that point right there. Now, plus 3, oh, I have a y, what did I say I'd plug in for each of my y's? I'd actually be a 4. And then I have equals 12. I have no more letters to actually plug in for. So now this is what I was talking about. You're going to do on the left side of your math. We actually don't have anything on the right side of our math to do. So we're just hoping that this left side of our equation is going to equal 12. So let's find out. 4 times 0 is 0. 3 times 4 is 12. And we know that 12 plus 0 is actually just going to be 12. So does our 12 equal 12? Check. Yes, it does. So this is actually a true statement. That means that this point, 0, 4, actually lies on that line if we were to graph it. Okay, let's test out another point. At point negative 3, 1, we're checking to see if it's a solution to our same equation up here. Okay, so this time instead of I see if I, if I have an x, I'm going to plug in a negative 3. This time if I have a y, I'm going to get a 1, plug in a 1. So let's go ahead and write down our equation again. 4 times negative 3 plus 3 times a 1. And then it still equals 12. So 4 times negative 3, that's a negative 12. Positive times a negative is a negative. 3 times 1 is a positive 3. And all of a sudden, we see that we have negative 12 plus 3. That's a negative 9. Negative $9, being in debt $9, and having $12 is definitely not the same thing. We put a little slash to that equal sign, and we circle that it was a false statement. Okay, let's do a couple more, you guys. Um, so for here, we're going to go through and do, um, I want you guys to determine if each of the given points, again, same directions as before, so we're going to go ahead and do example 2. This time on my part A, if I see an x, this is my x, this is my y, that's where I keep getting those, so if I see an x, I'm going to plug in a 5, if I see a y, I'm going to plug in a negative 1. So let's go ahead and make some room for us to do some math here. So if I have x, I said I would plug in a 5, plus 3 times, if I said I saw a y, I would see a plug in a negative 1, equals negative 3. Okay, so again, I don't have any math to do on that right side, but let's check the left side. So we have 5 plus 3 times negative 1. So 5 plus, and 3 times negative 1, actually let's not do a plus, and just write minus 3. 3 times a negative 1 is a negative 3. So 5 minus 3 is definitely not negative 3. This is actually 2 equals a negative 3. So when you guys are solving this, I want you to go completely all the way through until you get that answer. And this, if, if it doesn't equal, you just say false and write a slash for that equal sign. Now our last one, if we have our x equaling a negative 6 and our y equaling a positive 1. Let's see what happens when we plug it into our equation here. Oh, and I already did the 5. So x equals a negative 6 this time. And then plus 3 times our y, which is a 1 and that equals to negative 3. Let's see if we have a true statement. I have a negative 6 plus 3 times 1, which is 3, and I have equals negative 3. Yay, negative 6 plus 3 is a negative 3, and that really does actually equal negative 3. So we leave our equal sign alone, and we box it, and we get to mark that it was true. Okay, so I want to show you guys a little bit harder ones. We've only been solving ones on the left side, so um, I want to show you guys where there are ones that we actually have to solve on both sides. So if you guys look at this problem here, we have a negative 5y equals negative 6x plus 15. 
It's totally fine. We still identify our x and y the same way. So if I have an x, I'm going to plug in a 0, and our y is going to be a negative 3. So let's go ahead and actually plug these in now to our equation, and let's see what we get. So if I have a negative 5 times y, I said I'd plug in a negative 3 for that y, equals a negative 6 times x, which was 0, plus 15. So now let's go ahead and do our math on our left side. Negative 5 times negative 3 is a positive 15. Negative times a negative is a positive. Equals negative 6 times 0 is actually 0, and we're going to add 15 to 0. We actually get 15 equals 15. Yay, this is true. Now when I see x for my part b, I see I'm going to plug in 5 for x and a 3 for y. So let's go ahead and plug in those values now. So I just pull up for my next equation again, negative 5 times 3, I see a y there, minus 6 times 5, and then plus 15. Okay, so negative 5 times 3 is actually a negative 15. Negative 6 times 5 is a negative 30, and negative 30 plus 15 is actually a negative 15. So again, we got negative 15 equals negative 15. Oh, I just covered our true statement here. Let's actually circle this. Let me write this somewhere else. Um, so we got our negative 15 is equal to a negative 15. So we just found another point. So both of these points are actually points on our graph, on a line. So it's okay. That's why there's infinitely many, you guys. There's tons and tons of points that will actually be on that line, making our equations equal to each other. All right, our last example, you guys, um, and then we will wrap it up. So again, um, if I see an x value over for our first example for a, I'm going to plug in a 2. If I see a y, I'm going to be plugging in a negative 1. So I see my y right away. Be careful because there's a negative in front of it that you need to keep there and then pl plug in your negative 1. Now that's equal to a 2 times your x that we just saw we were going to plug in a 2 for, and minus 3. And let's do our math on the left side. A negative 1 times a negative 1 is a positive 1 equals, now let's do the math on our right side, 2 times 2 is 4 minus 3. Oh, well we do know that 4 minus 3 is actually 1, so we have to write our left side 1 equals 1. Check, yay, this is true. All right, let's do our last step here. So x equals 6 and y equals a negative 9. Let's go ahead and plug it into our equation to see what happens. Again, that negative in front of that negative y needs to stay out there. So negative times a negative 9 equals 2 times x, which is now 6 this time, minus 3. A negative times a negative is a positive. 2 times 6 is 12, and we're subtracting 3 from it. Well, I know that 12 minus 3 is 9 again. So I got my left side, just brought over there, and I actually subtracted and got those values. Yay, 9 equals 9. They are true. So anytime an equation is equal to each other, that means you have a true statement. It is a point on the line. If you have numbers that don't equal each other, then that means you have a false statement and that point does not on the, fall on the line. So I just want to recap with you guys really fast what we actually did. So make sure that you have your essential question in your mind of how many solutions are there truly on a graph. Then we went through and we realized, okay, if, it was a solu if this point was a solution, then yay, it was actually on this graph here. And then if it wasn't, it was actually off the graph. The algebraic way that, we just, um, that I just got done showing you, so yay, this point right here was a point on the graph because those two sides equaled each other algebraically. However, this point was not because we had a negative 9 equaling 12. Well, negative 9 does not equal 12, so this was a false statement, making sure that that point was not on the line. I hope you guys um, understood all this. If not, please rewind it, slow it down, whatever you guys need to do to understand this. Keep rewatching it, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks.